Hi there, my name is Alex Feisley. I'm the CEO of Gravital, and I'm here today to give you a quick demonstration of gateways and site-to-site -site networking using NetMaker version 0.2, which we just released today. It has a bunch of new upgrades and features, and I'm hoping to show you a couple of those along the way. Okay, so I have a VPC on AWS, and I have a service on it called Pong. If I ping it, I get Pong. So it's just a simple API, but it's at a private endpoint. On my home network, I actually have the same situation with a service called Ping. It's another API running on a server on my home network, but again, it's not publicly accessible. What I want to be able to do is to access the Ping API from my EC2 instance, and I want to be able to access the Pong API from my home network, neither of which I can currently do. So in order to do that, the first thing I'm going to do is install NetMaker. So we have a simple install script here you can run. We just need to provide the server IP. And currently, it's not up and running. So let's go ahead and add that IP and run the script. It's going to wait a little bit for Mongo to come up and running. Then it's going to install the NetMaker client. It's going to add it. It's going to set up the service. And after it's all said and done, we should have NetMaker running along with our UI. So if I go ahead and refresh that, we actually do have that running. And if I check this out here, we see we have it up and running. Okay, so now we have an active NetMaker instance and we're gonna set up an account. And there you have it, we have NetMaker. And the first thing I wanna show you is a new feature we've added. And this is the reason why NetMaker actually is not running as a Docker container. Um, it's running in what's called client mode, which allows NetMaker to be added to networks automatically. So you see we already have a node here called NetMaker, and it's on a default network, which is another thing we set up. So now once you first come in to your NetMaker instance, you have a default network that you can use and add nodes to, and you already have a node in it up and running. So if we look here, you see we have our net client running on our NetMaker server. So this isn't too helpful alone. What we wanna do is add another node to this. So let's go to our access keys and add one. Let's give it a couple uses and create. And we have a command down here. This is going to be how we add it into our network. So I'm going to add my local machine. Oops, and I'm, oh, it's because of the directory I'm in. Has a naming conflict, so let's run that again. And there we go. We are now up and running here as well. Let's take a look at our nodes. We now have our other node, and this is my home machine, so let's just go ahead and call that workstation. That'll just make it a little easier. Okay, let's go back. So we now have the NetMaker machine and we have my local workstation. And so these guys should now be able to ping each other over the local network. Let's give that a try. So this guy is going to ping not one, but two. And we see that's going through. Let's try it from here. Okay. And we now have our EC2 instance and our local instance connected over WireGuard. Now what we want to do next is set up that site-to-site -site networking. So how are we going to do that? Well, let's say I want to make this easy on myself and I just want to have access to the whole VPC from my uh, local instance. So let's go ahead and set up NetMaker as a gateway. So the first thing we're going to do is see where it's going to gateway to. Okay, let's run IP address. 
and we have an interface here that we're gonna use as well as a network range. And we know that our service is running on 172.31.63.207. So we're gonna use that as our subnet. Here we have make NetMaker a gateway node. Okay, let's do it. So we're gonna take this range here and let's make that a slash 24. And this is gonna go over the ENS5 interface. So now NetMaker is a gateway. We should see it show up as that. So it is now a gateway and traffic coming in from any other node on the network heading to that range will go through NetMaker. So it's gonna take a minute for our local node to upgrade, but let's take a look at WireGuard Show again. So currently it's still not gotten that update. It'll probably take a few more seconds. Let's check if we've gotten it here. Actually, I guess it's not gonna show there, huh? So let's wait one more second and there we go. We now have an allowed IPs range added for that subnet and let's try to access that service. So you remember before we ran that curl command over here, Pong was accessible from here. It's not accessible from local, but now it's accessible. We are now accessing a private subnet on AWS from our home machine. Now let's try to go the other way. We have a home network that we wanna make accessible to AWS. We're gonna do a little something different for that. Let's create a new network and call it home. I'm gonna give it a range and make it local. And we're gonna give that a local address range. For that, we're gonna give it this range here. Now what that means is this is not a public network. It does not use public IPs. It's not gonna be accessible from anywhere on the internet. It's only really accessible over this network, over this home network. So let's go ahead and add our machines to it. We have our install command here and we're first gonna run it from our local machine. Let's just run that from the temp, make sure we don't get some override there. Well, actually, yeah, we don't need to run the install command entirely because we have our key already. So instead, what we can run is the netmaker command. So let's just run sudo net client install with our token. Okay, there it is. So we should show that on our home network. And we're gonna need to go to that other service as well. So we're gonna SSH over to there. And now that we're in, we can run our install command because this one doesn't have NetMaker yet. So let's run that. And there we go. It's now installed on our home network and we have a private range there. You can see both nodes are there and they are healthy. So what are we gonna do now? Let's make sure this is working first. So let's ping this address. Oops. Okay, it's reachable. Exit out of that server, let's ping it. Oop. And it's reachable. Okay, that's great. And so we should be able to actually curl our service over this. And there we have it. We can now use that private address to access it. And what we wanna do is have our AWS machine use that same private address. So let's make our workstation a gateway as well. And for this, we have a little bit easier time because we can just choose our home network. It's gonna use the default interface name and the range, and that's all we have to do. 
and it's limited to the machines we chose. So unlike our VPC, where we now have access to that full range, this gateway only has access to the nodes on this network we make. So we should see our workstation update, and it is now a gateway. Now we just have to wait for our EC2 instance to get that update. So let's run WireGuard show. So it still has those same allowed IPs, but another second later, there we have it. It now has that range. And let's try to curl that address. There we go. So we are now able to access a machine on our home network from EC2 without a public address. And we're able to access a machine in our EC2 VPC from our home network without a public address as well. And that's how you set up gateways in NetMaker. Removing them is just as easy. I can do this. There's one gone. Let's wait for that to update actually. And let's remove the other one. So now those gateways are gone and we no longer have that access. So that was just a quick demonstration. There's a couple other new features here as well, which we can get into. Um, but I hope you enjoyed that demonstration and I hope you'll check out NetMaker. We have a couple other new features as well, such as a public key refresh. So you can refresh the public keys on all your machines. If for instance, you think someone accessed it who shouldn't have, um, and we can also expire nodes now. So that is another option as well. Let's say you only want this home node network uh, to be accessible for a short period of time. You can now set an expiration date on there and this node will then expire, which can be done doing this. So a lot of fun things you can check out and I hope you will. Thank you very much and uh, Hope to see you soon.